welcome again sa ITS Information Technology Skills. On today's video, pag-uusapan natin ulit ang quick sort algorithm. But for today, we're going to compute its time complexity. So, from the first video na nagawa natin about quick sort, we have this code for partitioning. Okay, so kung di nyo alam kung paano gumagana ang quick sort algorithm, ilalagay ko sa taas ng screen nyo or sa description box yung link paano gumagana ang quick sort. So, this partitioning, guys, this is used para mahati yung array natin into a lower portion and the higher portion. Then, we have the algorithm for quick sort wherein we analyze natin if the index of low is less than the index of high. You ulit niya yung partition and ikokol niya yung sarili niya ulit which is isosort naman niya or ipapartition niya ulit si lower portion. Then, next is the sorting or the partition of the higher portion. Kaya, po siya tinawag na divide and conquer kasi kung titignan natin, it calls itself dito sa loob ng function natin na quick sort. Okay? It is a recurrence relation. So na guys, if we're going to compute the time complexity, unahin muna natin si partition. Kasi kung titignan natin yung partition, ang laman niya lang is simple statements and a for loop. While dito sa my quick sort algorithm, meron tayong call of function. Okay? So dito muna tayo kay partition. For the partition guys, we're going to compute the time complexity ng no, mga initialization that is 1. Okay? So, 1 lang yung time complexity niyan, guys. Kasi, initialize na naman natin yung variables na kailangan natin. Same dito sa my swap. 1 lang din yung time complexity niyan. Kasi, pagbabalik na rin niya lang yung elements. And 1 lang din yung time complexity ng no, return. Kasi, magbabalik lang siya ng value for the partition. So, dito sa mga 1, guys, ignore na lang natin yan. Bakit? Kasi, kapag iisipin naman natin, if we're going to compute the time complexity of an algorithm, ikakancel out lang din naman natin yung mga constant. So, let's ignore the 1 or the constant. Dito tayo sa for loop. Ang titignan natin ngayon dito sa for loop is the increment or decrement part. So, dito makikita natin ang increment niya is J++. Ibig sabihin, nag increment siya by 1. So, based sa mga unang video natin on how to compute the time complexity of a for loop, kapag nag increment yan by 1, the time complexity is P go of N. So, kung hindi nyo alam kung paano na-compute yung P go of N, Ilalagay ko ulit sa taas ng screen nyo or sa my description box yung link on how to compute the time complexity of a for loop. So now guys, compute naman natin yung time complexity ni quick sort algorithm. Okay, so it's a separate time complexity because separate line po siya which is meron siyang function. Okay, so this is a recurrence relation. Bakit recurrence relation siya? Kasi yung titignan natin sa loob ng quick sort na function it will call its help. Okay? So, if a recurrence relation, we're going to consider the first call as T of N. Then, na-compute na natin kanina yung time complexity ni partition. The time complexity of the partition is B go of N. So, dito, consider na lang muna natin is N. Tapos dito, meron tayong another call. Okay? So, dito sa call na to, meron tayong ipapas na array. Tapos, the value of low. Then, the value of I, which is PI minus 1. So, it's another call. So basically, kung yung first call natin is T of N, this is another call. Meron tayong T of N 1. And meron ulit tayong isa pang call dito. Magpapas naman siya ulit ng isang array. Then the PI plus 1. Then the value of high. So this is another call ulit that is T of N 2. So, bakit P of N1 and P of N2? Kasi nagpapasta naman tayo ng mga parameters or arguments dun sa function natin. So, if we're going to add itong mga nandito, meron tayong equation na magagawa which is P of N is equal to P of N1 plus P of N2 plus N. Okay? So, itong N na to, don't forget, this is the time complexity ni partition. So, let's say, meron tayong array wherein the 5 volt is the first element. So, during the quick sort, mapapartition yan or mahati yan. So, let's say, this is the P of N. So, yung equation natin na to, composed of the time complexity para matapos si P of N1 plus yung time para matapos si N2 plus partition or para mahanap yung location ni pivot. Okay? So, ganun po yung equation na nabuo natin for the quick sort algorithm. The time consumed to complete N1 plus the time consumed to complete N2 plus N, which is the partition. So, first muna natin pag-usapan is the first case. Let's say meron tayong array. Ang gusto mo din sa array mo is to arrange that in ascending order. Pero, ang na-provide sa'yo na array is like this. Kung titignan natin, naka-arrange na siya in ascending order. 
So basically, ang worst case scenario niyan guys is kung gusto mong i-arrange yung isang ari in ascending order, pero ang nabigay sa'yo is naka-arrange naman na. Ang gagawin ni Quick Sort Algorithm, hahanapin pa rin niya kung meron siyang ipapartition or wala. So, let's say yung pivot natin is 1. Iko-compare niya yan sa lahat ng element na naiwan. Okay? So, kung merong mas maliit sa kanya, ilalagay niya dun sa my left part niya. Kung merong mas malaki sa kanya, ilalagay niya sa my right part niya. Pero dito, pag kinompare niya yan sa lahat ng element niya, ang na-consume niya na time is n. Okay? So, bakit n? So, let's say meron kang 7 elements. Kapag kinompare mo yan sa lahat, okay? So, n times mo din siyang pupuntahan yung mga indices mo. Okay? So, wala siyang nilipat sa left part niya. Magkakaroon na din tayo ng another pivot. So, ngayon, ang another pivot natin is si 2. So, dahil natapos naman na si element 1, na i-compare yung sarili niya sa iba pang elements, si 2, hindi niya na i-compare ulit yung sarili niya kay 1. Okay? So, na compare na ako ni 1 kanina, hindi ko na siya pupuntahan pa. Ang i-compare na lang ni 2 is yung mga elements na iba. Okay? So, 4, 6, 7, 8, and 9. So, the time complexity na na-consume ni 2 para i-compare sa sarili niya is n minus 1. Bakit n minus 1? Kasi nawala na si 1. Okay? Nabawasan na siya ng isang comparison. Pero, nalaman niya na walang mas maliit sa kanya dito sa remaining elements. Okay? So, andyan pa rin siya. Ngayon, papalitan ulit natin si pivot. Ang pivot naman natin ngayon is si 4. So, kukompare niya ulit sa mga iba pang element. The time complexity ni 4 is n minus 2. Bakit minus 2? Kasi, hindi niya na kinompare yung sarili niya kay 1 and kay 2. Kasi natapos na siya kanina. And so on. Hanggang mapalitan lahat ng pivot natin. Hanggang umabot ng element 9. Okay? So, walang nasusort. Walang nailalagay dun sa my left part. So, masasabi natin, dahil wala namang nailagay sa my left part, tulad nito, kay 2, wala siyang nilipat dun sa left niya. Kay 4, wala siyang nilipat sa left niya. Pwede natin sabihin na si N1 is 0. Okay? There's no time consume para masort yung left portion or left partition. While dun sa N2 natin, titignan natin, nagma-minus tayo by 1 every nag-change tayo ng partition. Kaya po yung N2 natin is N minus 1. So kung meron na tayo ng value ng N1 and N2, we can say that yung T of N equals to N1 plus N2 plus N. Kapag may substitution tayo, meron tayo T of 0. Okay? Kasi yung N1 natin is 0. While yung T of N2 is N minus 1. Kaya N minus 1 yung nandito sa loob ng parenthesis plus 1. So dahil yung T of 0 is wala naman ng value. Bakit walang value? Kasi wala naman siyang sinusort or nilalagay sa may left portion niya, kaya 0 po yung n1. Okay? So, kung tatanggalin natin yan, meron na lang tayong t of n minus 1 plus n. So, based dun sa mga unang video natin on how to compute a recurrence relation with an equation of t of n minus 1 plus n, the time complexity here is big O of n squared. Kung hindi nyo alam kung paano na compute yung big O of n squared, ilalagay ko sa taas ng screen nyo or sa may description box yung links on how to compute yung recurrence relation with an equation of t of n minus 1 plus n. So, we're going to use naman yung three method. Let's say, yung first na pagpapartition natin or hanapin natin yung partition, just like this, dito sa may unang array natin, is n. Okay? So, n yung time complexity para ma-partition or ma-compare niya yung sarili niya sa lahat ng element ng array. Then, dun sa next na call niya, meron ulit tayong n minus 1. Okay, so just like this, yung nagpalit na tayo na pivot. The time complexity para ma-pair niya yung sarili niya dun sa mga ibang element is n time. Then, meron ulit tayong next na call. Mag-change tayo ulit ng pivot. That is n minus 2. The time complexity para ma-pair yung sarili niya is n minus 1. Hanggang umabot tayo ng 1 or the last element. If that happens, the time complexity is 2. So, if we're going to observe ito na lang mga nasa taas, tanggalin natin yung mga constant. Ang maiwan na lang is n every call. So, ibig sabihin, every call, meron tayong for loop, which is hahanapin niya yung partition. Okay? So, so, n times n, that is n square. So, for the worst case analysis, the time complexity of a quicksort algorithm is big O of n square.
let's have the best case naman. For the best case, guys, let's say this is the array. And yung pivot ulit natin is the first element. Tapos paghahanapin ni pivot or i-compare ni pivot yung self niya dun sa bang element, the time complexity for that is 10. Which is, this is for the partition. Yung hahanapin niya yung left partition and the right partition niya. So, kapag na partition siya, magkakaroon tayo ng array na ganito. This is the left partition, the pivot, and the right partition. So, maulit-ulit yung activity, which is, ipapartition ulit yung left point, which is, ito yung tinatawag nating time complexity for the t of n1. Then, dito naman, papartition niya ulit yun. This is the time complexity for n2. So, ito yung una natin na-analyze kanina. Time complexity para matapos si n1 plus the time complexity para matapos si n2 plus yung partition. Okay? So, titignan natin. Let's say, maganda yung pagkakahati niya. That is the best case. Okay? So, just like the example here, maganda yung pagkakahati niya. So, pwede natin sabihin that the time complexity for n1 is n over 2. Bakit n over 2? Kasi kinompare niya sa lahat sa sarili niya. Then, maganda yung pagkakahati. That is over 2. Dinivide lang niya ng dalawang beses. Okay? Then, we have here n2. Maganda din yung pagkakahati niya. That is n over 2. So, that is the best case scenario that will happen. Yung maganda lahat yung pagkakahati. Kung di naman maganda yung at least meron lang siyang sobra na isa or minus na isa. So, if we're going to use the substitution method dun sa equation natin, we have this equation na t of n is equal to t of n over 2 plus t of n over 2 plus n. Okay? So, if we're going to compute this, meron tayong 2t n over 2 plus n. So, compute na natin to kasi hindi pa tayo nakagawa ng video natin on how to compute yung 2t n over 2 plus n. So, using the substitution method, we need to analyze what is the value of t of n over 2. And alam na natin yung value ni t of n. Ang value ni t of n is itong nandito. So, yung t of n, yun yung nandito sa taas, 2t n over 2 plus n, which is ito lang original equation natin, i-divide natin lahat yun by 2. Kasi itong part na to. Okay? Using the rule of division, kapag meron tayong divide na number, pwede natin siyang balik ta rin into multiplication which is similar with times 1 half. Okay, so bakit nag 1 half? Because 2 here is a whole number. Pag binaliktad natin yan, gagawin natin siyang multiplication, yung whole number natin magiging half. Okay, we're going to multiply this. Meron tayong 2t n over 2 square. So, 2 times 2, that is 2 square plus n over 2. But walang over 2 si 2t. Yung 2t, guys, that is part of n. Okay? So, t of n siya. Ibig sabihin, ang divisor din ni 2t is 2. Okay? So, 2 square siya. Now, yung same substitution, ilalagay natin yung value ni n over 2 dito. Papalitan natin, meron na tayo. 2, which is yung original equation natin, times yung value ni t of n, which is 2t n over 2 square plus n over 2 plus n. Yung n dito sa dulo, ito naman yung nandito. So, if we're going to multiply this, meron tayong 2 square t. So, paano naging 2 square? 2 times 2, that is 2 square. Pwede lang din namang 4 of n over 2 square plus n. So, itong plus n na to, ito siya. So, bakit nawala yung over 2 niya? Kasi, rule in multiplication, kapag minultiply natin yung 1 half times 2, nakasell out lang natin yung dalawang 2, and may iiwan na lang is yung nasa taas na value, which is the n. Okay, so plus n, ito yung nasa dulo. So, if we're going to add this, meron tayong equation na 2 square t of n over 2 square plus 2n. Okay, so inad lang natin yung mga nandito sa taas. So, if we're going to have another call of function, we need to identify the value of n over 2 square. So, ulitin lang natin yung ginawa natin dito kanina and substitution ulit. So, ulit-ulit lang yung activity. As long as the value of t of n is not 1. So, kailan ba magiging 1 yung nasa loob ng parenthesis? Magiging 1 yan kapag dinivide natin yung n by n. Kung na natin, meron tayong 2 square dito. Tapos dito, 2 lang. So, kung pa ulit tayong another call of functions, mag-generate lang yan, maging 2 third. So, pwede natin consider dito sa taas na 2 raised to 1, then dito, 2 raised to 2. So, kung natin, meron tayong mga constant number. 
So, 2 raised to 1, that is 1. 2 raised to 2. Kung meron pa tayong another call, magiging 2 raised to p. So, we were going to consider yung 1, 2, 3 as a constant. So, let's say that is k or c, any value or variable name that you want. Okay, so, for me, it's k na lang. So, masasabi natin na magiging 1 lang yung p of n natin kapag if we divide n over 2k, where 2k is equal to n. Okay, so, kapag naabot na nyo yung value ni n, let's say the value of n is 16, so, yung k natin is 4. So, ganun lang siya, guys. And if we're going to convert this, yung k natin is log of n a base 2. Okay? So, kapag ganito ang case, we can have a equation of 2k. So, bakit may k tayo dito? Kasi yung papansinan natin, meron ulit tayong mga constant dito. Dito is the 1, tapos naging 2. So, that is a constant. Then, meron tayo yung constant ulit dito na number. So, 2 raised to k plus kn. Bakit kn? May k ulit tayo dito. Kung titignan natin sa una, this is 1. 1 times n, that is n. Tapos, naging 2n. So, that is another constant. So, meron tayong kn. So, nasabi kanina that 2k is equal to n. So, pwede natin i-substitute ulit yung mga nandito na equation na n. So, sana kuha si n, that is 2k. Dito natin pinumpin. P of n over 2k, which is magiging 1. Kaya, 1 na lang po siya. Plus, yung k natin, that is log of n base 2 times n. So, kapag minultiply natin itong mga to, meron tayong n plus n log n base 2. So, tinanggal na natin yung 2 because 2 is a constant number and if you take the time complexity of an algorithm, we're going to remove the constant. After removing constant, we're going to get the highest order term which is, ang pinakamataas dito sa equation natin is n log n. So, the time complexity or the best case for quick sort algorithm is big O of n log n. So, that's it guys. That is the time complexity of a quick sort algorithm. Kung nakatulong tong video na to, don't forget to like. And kung gusto nyo pang matuto about algorithms, don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell for more tutorial videos. Bye!